it's hard, mate. It's really hard. I had, I had a couple of quid saved up. I've lived, lived off that, and now I'm virtually skin. Hopefully, I'll get back on track, but yeah, this is not at the moment. It's not where I saw my life going. Having done so long, you, need, you, you know, you feel like as soon as you leave, you're sort of in this false set of mind that you know when you leave, oh, you'll fall into a job pretty easy. If you ain't got self-esteem, you can't really do much, can you? You get locked, cracked, torn, slacked. It's people like you and it's people like me. When it all fades to black, if you don't give, then you won't get any back. You get torn, cracked, locked, slacked. It's people like you and it's people like me. Previously, a group of unemployed men from Croydon got their first taste of a rugby camp designed to motivate them and make them more employable. They trained with anti-knife crime campaigner Mark Prince bang you up. and WBA heavyweight champion David Hay. Attack every session as though it's the last session. And took what they learned into their first ever match. One, two, three, hold up! All the hard knocks recruits are either unemployed or lacking motivation, so psychologist Paul Barros is brought in to help. But only three lads turn up, meaning that the potential success of the day is scuppered before it even begins. The frustrating thing for us is we're putting rugby in front of them at the moment and some of them didn't like rugby to begin with and are now really getting into it. But a lot of them joined this course because when we were outside the job centres we said we can help you get work. The rugby was almost an, an addition, a, a tie-in. Suddenly we've done the rugby and they're really enjoying the rugby. Now we get to the bit where actually we can help you and they don't turn up. Does it wind you up? Mm. Yeah. Why, why um, it's a team I don't, effort. Yeah, it is a team effort. And yeah, they have let us down. Today we could have been training. Um, but on a bigger scale, they've let themselves down. Yeah. The first impression I have here is of people who can't get themselves out of bed. Now, if I was employing them, my first impression would be forget it. Nice to meet you, Paul. Nice to meet you. This program is a massive, massive opportunity. And it's an opportunity, excuse my French, I'll be fucked if I'm going to miss, mate. So you're, you're definitely committed? Yeah, 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 100%, mate, 100%. I've got a three-year-old little boy to be looking after, and at the moment, the only, the only money that I'm bringing in is scratching on, and that ain't good enough. What's your son's name? Archie. Archie. If I, I said, look at that, and suddenly the protective instinct comes in, yeah. Aaron's protective instinct goes like this. <laughs> but about Archie, quite yeah, right, yeah, I'm yeah, the same course. about my son. You won't let Archie I'm suffer. I'm not letting Archie suffer. You're not letting Archie no, suffer. No way. Put both arms on there. That's it. I had a bit, not a rough childhood. I had what I wanted when I was a kid, but I had a few things happen to me. I was, I don't care to say it on camera, I was sexually abused by my granddad when I was a kid. I went through years of hell for it. I'm not trying to sit here and get your sympathy, I'm just, I'm just giving you my story. But yeah, I'm, I'm paranoid, I'm paranoid from your son and that. Um, Silly things like when you want to go for a wee, or like when he wants to go for a wee, you're not near a toilet, and he goes like near a bush or something. I'm constantly like looking around, like, silly things like that. Hoping to boost numbers, Scott Quinnell hunts for Tony, who last week escaped a prison sentence because he showed commitment to changing his ways. I feel like grabbing hold of him, taking him back to the courts, and saying, "I'm sorry, but we made a mistake." Um, you need to sort it out. Hi, how are you? Is Tony there, please? No, he's not. He's in hospital. He's in hospital? What's the matter with him? He's got a problem with Oh, no. After admitting to a fight last week at training, it looks like Tony might still be getting into trouble off the pitch. He's been in hospital for three days. Uh, he's, got some, uh, he's got some problems. Um, and uh, she... She, she can't and she hasn't been to, to see him, so uh, when are the really. One dead end doesn't stop Scott, who goes hunting for recent graduate Alex. Hello. Hey. How are you? Not bad. Was that end of yours this morning? Uh, not bad. Out last night? Uh, yeah. You're an intelligent guy, you've got the qualification. It's the last bit of the jigsaw. Uh, can I steal a car for an hour? You can, you, you can get changed now and I can take you straight over there. Scott bungs Alex into his car and takes him to see Paul. You know, I've done a couple of interviews and haven't been successful. 
in the last interview I had um, was actually really bad. And I actually just said, you know what? I'm not even good for this position. Some of them have got a lot to learn. I'm not surprised these people haven't got jobs. We've got people that had a good education, have done three or four years at university, couldn't drag themselves out of their bed. It's good to see how the people from the different backgrounds are interacting and the values that they've got, you know, and it's the privileged boys that haven't got the values, you know, and they need to get the values, need to get them quickly. I'm 24 now and I want to do something in my life, you know what I mean? I'm 24, I ain't, I ain't got nothing in life really now. And I think so I want to get something out of life, you know what I mean? So what else do you have to do to get, maximise this opportunity and get the most out of life? I need to learn to read and write probably a bit better and everything so I can't really read and write that well. I wasn't ever used to being told what to do and since I've been here, I mean, I've learned a lot of discipline. We're always getting knocked down on that on the field, aren't we? And we're just getting back up and that's, it's teaching you, it's teaching you. I didn't know it could be as good. So I mean, that's a, it's, a, it's a really good analogy of it knocked down, you keep getting it back that's up. That's what it's all about, yeah. It's what it's all about. That is the most amazing revelation for me, that you just go, yeah. I get it. Arriving late is Frenchman Pierre, who's keen to let everyone know that he's trying to improve his health after being inspired by Mark Prince. How good are you getting? I'm very good. Which one I have you been not, doing? I've uh, been doing, uh, the, uh, you know, the... Down you go, let's see him. Okay. Uh, the presser. <sighs> I'm just trying to cut my drink down a bit, you know, just keep on trying to get my body back, you know. What happened inside your head in inside the, my in head the last Inside my like, um, I won't lie, the last uh, eight months, it was depression, I won't lie. I sent CVs, no reply, or either anything. I just used to sit down like, wow, is this the way my life is going to end up? There's some people that's alcoholic. But there's some people that's not alcoholic. They just drink, trying to tend like uh, forgetting about their problem. Everybody has a different definition of what, what is alcoholic is. is. It. But you use the word alcoholic. So as a psychologist, I would say mm -hmm. maybe secretly inside your little a secret, worried. A secretly inside you will always be worried if you really care about yourself. For me, it's just like a wake up call, really. Because I'm in coach telling me, you can do it, get up, you can do it, you can do it, you can do it. Even if you sleep, you feel like that. We turn up to what is a very important day, a very important day in School of Hard Knocks, and that's interview training day, and they don't turn up. Our so-called students, and we only call them students because they were in education last year. I think they've got to forget about that. They've got, got to forget about going out on, uh, on the drink. They've got to forget about the fact that they were students, they've got degrees, they've got the opportunity in life. They need to turn their lives around. The reason they're here is because they haven't got any jobs. In an effort to bring a diverse squad closer together, the Hard Knocks players are taken on a team building exercise. This isn't the university. This isn't the streets of London. This is the mountains. This is North Wales. If they don't work together here, then it's over. I believe that you develop bonds within teams and amongst people either through very, very positive, exciting, happy experiences or downright miserable, nasty, horrible ones. Um, and we've got a bit of both. Late at night, the lads arrive and start unloading their kit. I think it will break them. It will absolutely split them apart. It will divide them completely. But I think it has to. And I think until they go to the point of no return, they will realise, actually, the only way we can work together is a team. We're going to get killed tonight, bro. It's the woods, mate. At the moment, I can't make fucking head not out of it. As they unpack the camping equipment, Pierre has some kit issues of his own. Can you see the shoes everyone's got on at the moment? See the sore boots everyone's got on? But Can you see those boots? They are not very good. See these boots? What you got on? You got Converse. Converse. So you're going up a mountain Come on. in a pair of American straight, Converse. Actually. Armed with their military camping gear and a few dead rabbits, the lads start to climb up the steep hill. With an old sheep pen for a campsite, the players set to work on their shelters and fires, with differing success. I can't feel my hands. I can't feel my hands. It did say, right, go away and get some dead 
Well, I thought that'd be all right for Go get some right, those embers, you need to blow on those. Jay said, if this doesn't light. Boys, put the, put the dry... I'm walking back down to the barn in a minute, mate. Fuck this. In unfamiliar conditions, the players have problems lighting their fires, and the prospect of a good night's sleep seems bleak, especially when the rain falls. When the sun rises over the young men from Croydon, they are slow to wake after a tough night's sleep. They go about their morning tasks without much enthusiasm and belatedly march down the mountain to get instructions from local farmer Gareth Jones. Right lads, today we're going to be collecting wild ponies. We're going to be taking a sweep of this really, really steep mountain. These are quite big ponies and sometimes they will come towards you. <coughs> Okay, so shout, top of your voices, make as much noise, don't be scared, move out of the way, and there's a good possibility they might knock you over. Yeah. Okay, get back in the cattle trailer now. The team pack into a cattle trailer for an interesting journey ahead. Coming up, the player's patience is tested to the limit. Get rid of the fuck out of there, please. Before they're pushed to the edge in training. The hard knocks players prepare to climb the Welsh mountains. Okay, boys, let's go! Oh, fuck about it, mate. Walking on that. Just had a fucking shitty morning, innit? Started shouting at me, started saying I weren't doing nothing. When I was like making a fire, getting firewood, all this shit, he started saying, like, oh, I was gonna, I wanted to lamp. Just pissing me off. One guy pissed me off once, so I decided to turn around and run him over. You know, just stuff like that. Um, I used to like exploding things, you know, if it was a car, you know, I used to like to explode it, like just see it blow up and that. And Tom pissed me once off, uh, went to burn his house down. Luckily, I didn't get that far because his dad walked out and saw me with a jerry can in my hand, and um, you know, I just went off, but so lucky he did. In search of horses, the unemployed men from Croydon head off up the mountain. But it isn't long before vast gaps appear in the group as the disparity in fitness levels starts to show. They'd never seen anything like this in Croydon before, never experienced anything like this. The changing conditions when we were at the bottom, it was lovely. We're coming up here now, we're coming into cloud, you know, and uh, it, uh, the temperature drops, everything gets more difficult. We've got Pierre down there who hasn't eaten anything all night. He came in a pair of Converse trainers, so we had to get him a pair of wellies. He had no socks on, you know, so we've had to try to kit him out a little bit. And now we've got Lewis uh, down the far end who's, uh, who's, who's struggling. We've got to stay here. Like 30 metre gaps to chase the horses, but I'm fucked. As the coaches feared, the defensive line starts to suffer from big gaps, giving the wild horses an opportunity to escape. We've had to stop the group, we've had to say, okay, we'll have to, we'll have to wait for the boys to catch us up before we can move. We've got some horses there, what we don't want to do is bolting down and around because we've got a lazy uh, line going down the hill. It's just no discipline. Watch we don't lose these horses, lads! I hadn't any sleep. Freezing cold all night. Bullock. Could be better. Could have got some food this morning. And I'm walking up a fucking mountain trying to catch some ponies. Shortly after voicing his disapproval of the situation, three horses head down the mountain in Lewis's direction, leaving him responsible for whether they break the defensive line or not. He acts alone and eventually manages to encourage the horses to keep moving in the right direction. After nearly losing the animals, coach Chris Chudley pulls aside the slackers. We've all got to be together. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and if we're not together, the fucking horses, up on that hill there, the horses were actually running for gaps. Yeah, and the boys were running around like glass flies trying to close the gap. Yeah, and we had three down the bottom here and you were just so far off the pace. We'd have lost them, we'd all be back there now starting again. We sent these guys off the hill because they're so far off the pace. While the stragglers are sent packing, the fittest in the team reach the top of the mountain with Will Greenwood and farmer Gareth Jones. I'm impressed. Mr Greenwood's on the top there with five lads and um, they're doing a flipping good job. 
In the final valley, the Hard Knocks lads find the three horses Lewis saved earlier, trying to break the line again. Mentored by Gareth, they succeed in pushing them towards the farm. You can see the horses down the bottom. There, five of them. And we now have to keep this line. It's what it's all about, the defensive line, left and right. Keep, keep the line, hold the line. If you break and the dog leg forms, the horses will go for the gap. If you keep the line and keep the noise up, everything we're telling them, it sounds ridiculous. T totally relevant to what goes on on a rugby field. The squad descend the final slope and opinions are divided about the success of the exercise. It was pretty good actually. Got quite into it, nearly caught a few ponies, but now I'm absolutely freezing. It relates quite well to rugby as well, got to keep a line not letting him through, so yeah, no, I think it was a good exercise. That's what I think of that, do you know what I mean? I'm tired, I'm hungry, we walked around the mountain for fucking how long? About three, four hours, More something like that. Eight. There's yeah, fences to play rugby later. Chasing ponies! When you're trying to let us fucking run up a mountain with no food inside you, yeah. you draw the line, bruv. Nah, end off. The bedraggled Londoners finally make their way back to base. It's not fair, I just think it's I, I just think it was a complete fucking pointless exercise, complete fucking waste of time. For knackered touch, Rev. Right? For knackered man. I think the fitness was good. But other than that, the whole idea of chasing horses around, why the fuck are we gonna chase horses around? Who the fuck on a rugby pitch can sprint as fast as a horse? No one. The players tuck into their first full meal of the day in silence. They gave up, they couldn't, they couldn't cope with it, it was too much for them. They're not used to having to grit the teeth and drive on. You know? um, and the boys that were slightly fitter did grit the teeth and drive on because they, I think there was a bit of personal pride in it, you know, that I'm fit, I should be able to do this. Um, whereas the boys that are used to giving up on a run will give up on this. The little lad, Lewis, on the bottom, he struggled in the beginning and then one of the girls that collects the ponies with me said um, he brought them three up fantastically. But... Disappointed in a lot of them. No get up and go, really. You know, when you're up there, you've got to put 100% in anything you do in life, no wonder they don't work. At night, Welsh dual code rugby coach Clive Griffith sets up a defence session in Bangor. Five hours after finishing herding, the hard knock squad arrive. We're running around mountains and then got to go training. We weren't even allowed to rest, we had to get up and fucking fuck off. Once again, Jason hangs at the back and his attitude grabs Will's eye. What are you moaning about? We don't want to see fucking wankers, oh, I can't be that bollocks this. You've come a long way, don't let, don't let it fucking end now. Yeah. Right? Listen to what this guy does and get excited about it, because right? yeah. he's a top man. It takes the players forever to get ready in their exhausted state. I have never felt so fucking shit in my life. I'll be bollocks if we're coming up here for them to get so close to the end and quitting. It is the story of their fucking lives. Life is about fucking hard work and I haven't been this cross on School of Knocks ever because they're just... 50% of them in there are a bunch of quitters and we have to find a way to get them out there to earn their rewards to earn their treats, otherwise, well, never mind School of Hard Knocks, anyone could turn up offering them a job on 500 grand a year, they'd quit within a fucking week. End of story. Belatedly, the team head out to join Clive Griffiths on the pitch and start their training. Fucking cold, bro. So, one goes in, then you shuffle left, then two. <laughs> oh! Oh! <laughs> Get my face, bro. Get out of my face. While most players show a surprising amount of commitment in the tackling exercise, Pierre does not. Get up, come on, get up. Get up here now, Frenchy. Get up here. Come on, come on, come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Get up. Look for the rest of your defenders. Now we're going to the game. <laughs> right, the only thing different is we ain't doing this, we're doing this. As soon as match conditions are introduced, the standard of the rugby increases dramatically. 
the Hard Knocks players put their bodies on the line and start to look like a proper rugby team. They finish the session playing their best rugby yet. I got the gentleman out because that was awesome. In the short time, we come together and we. Yes? Yes. As a team, yeah. we've been competitive, we've knocked seven bells out of each other, and we've come through the other end, and we're still mates. And that's what rugby's all about. We came to North Wales to break you down. But we came to North Wales to build you back up. This morning, we broke you down. Last night, we broke you down. I think in the last hour and a quarter, we've built you back up. When you walked down that road two hours ago, Honestly now, stick your hands up who didn't want to train. <laughs> two hours ago, who did not want to train? Where are we now, two hours later, smiles on our faces, feeling we are a fucking team, school of hard knocks, we can get better and we can get stronger. As the lads head inside enthusiastically, Will still has serious doubts over one player, who he calls aside. How are you feeling? I'm okay. You sure? After that, what, I'm what, what sport is rugby? Sport is a rugby is a fight. What happens here? Uh, yes. What happens there? That's true. You're on a rugby field. Yes. Okay, so it's That's things right. like this. It's, it's not just the physical things. Mm -hmm. I'm worried about your head, brother, yeah. because do you understand the simple calls of feet and out? I'm not doing this to embarrass anyone. No, 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 not at all. Uh, we need to be able to trust you on a rugby field. It's a very simple game. Mm -hmm. At the moment, I don't trust you. Okay. But I know if you work hard, I will trust you. Mm -hmm. I will, at the moment, it's a terrible thing to say. I do not want to be on a rugby field with you at the moment. Mm -hmm. But I know I would like to be if you learn and work hard and listen. Alrighty? Yes, coach. Good lad, let's go and have a shower, let's go and have a beer. So I know a few of the boys are just, they're at the absolute low, but the sessions that we've just had, it's just brought us right back up. When you play rugby after that experience, rugby is easy. And then the team started just bonding with, within five minutes of training, and that was. And now we're on top of the world. Never really wanted to go out there, but now we was all happy we'd done it. Everyone wanted to do a bit more after, so it was a really good session. Inspirational and emotional. Emotional, I think, would be the best word. It's been emotional. The men I saw on the rugby field tonight were not the men we met, however long ago it was. These were these were talented guys who can do better with their lives, and now it's our responsibility to make sure we find them those opportunities. Next week, things fall apart at training when Jason storms off. No, I'm not a nice fella. I don't like to take shit off him. Lewis breaks down, and the team are beasted at cage fighting. I'm gonna die. More sport news, views, and video on Sky Player, Sky Mobile TV, and at SkySports.com.